Welcome back to the mic. My guest today is Kevin Rempel. Kevin was a Team Canada sledge hockey player, and now he is the owner of the Sledge Hockey Experience. Kevin's here to tell me his story of how he went from playing to teaching. Kevin, thanks a lot for doing this. You got it, man. So, before we get into what you're doing nowadays, I just want to talk about your playing days. Um, when I, I did an interview with Billy last week, Billy Bridges, and I asked him, what's something about sledge hockey that maybe a lot of people don't know about that you would like them to know about? It can really help bring perspective um, to the challenges that we all face in life. I think it's one thing to uh, get on the ice and play and have a new appreciation for Paralympic sport and Paralympic athletes, but one of the things that I find really exciting when people get into sleds is to gain a better perspective on what their perceived limitations are about themselves. And when they get on there and they have a feeling of like, I don't have any idea how I'm going to figure this out, and they get on there and like, I'm, I'm getting it, I know what I'm, I, I think I gotta hang up a little bit more and they wanna keep on going. And that teaches them the resilience, the persistence that, that we all have within ourselves. But being exposed to something like that on the ice in a vulnerable position and then having that click, I think that's what's really special with sledge hockey. I mean, you played uh, on Team Canada and I was wondering like, what is your favorite moment from your playing this? Coming back in like 2013, winning the world championships was really, really a good one. Um, we had won almost every game in 2012 to lose the finals, so that was a real big heartbreak. And then uh, being a part of a championship winning team in 2013 was really exciting. Um, of course, like representing our country is always top of mind, and, um, but on a personal level, I really enjoyed experiencing what it was like to be one of the best in the world and what personally you can do when you push yourself as far as you can go. Like, I think we all, m many of us feel like when we're younger, what would it be like if I could be a professional athlete? Could I do it right. if I invested the time and the resources? And um, having done that was, was, was one of my favorite memories about playing my career as well. Awesome. So now you've moved on from playing and you've started the sledge hockey experience. So we got the cage here. Yeah. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about what it is that the sledge hockey experience is? When I was finished playing with the team in um, 2015, I felt like it's either now or never. And basically what I've done here is I created a, a corporate team building program called the Sledge Hockey Experience, where I focus solely, primarily, on getting the able-bodied population in sleds to experience Paralympic sport and, get, have, and then go through that process of understanding life with a disability. Um, it's done really well in just two and a half years. And as of August, we moved here in-house to the MasterCard Center for the next couple of years. That's awesome. Um, one of the most exciting things is that it's not like I'm twisting anybody's arm to play. Um, there's so many people that are hockey fans that have all seen sledge hockey and ask about it. <laughs> this is the thing is that going back to like when I felt like in my mind I saw the opportunity is I knew that someone needed to bridge the gap. Right. They all want to play. They just don't know how or where or somebody to teach them. Um, when you show up at the MasterCard Center, it's a half day event, um, 90 minutes pre-ice, 90 minutes on ice, and 30 minutes post-ice. We cater both before and after the event. We provide everything, all the hockey gear, jerseys, pucks, helmets, um, gloves. All you gotta do is show up, get on the ice and play. That's awesome. Um, so, you got some of the gear here. I yeah. mean, why don't you walk us through exactly what it is that we're looking at? I got 24 sets of sleds and sticks and hockey gear. Um, we've got four goalie targets here. Everything's on wheels, and that took a ton of um, problem solving to get to this point to like make it efficient so we can run the event smoothly. We got our jersey inventory over here. We just got some new jerseys where we started running the events with uh, just two colors, blue and white, but now we got blue, black, gray and white. Um, like refine the logo so everything's simpler. Um, because when you're here, we want you to have a Team Canada experience. Right. Like what was that experience like the first time that I walked into a locker room? And that's what I want you to have. When you walk in the locker room, it's like the helmets and gloves are all straight. They're perfectly matching. You got your name bar above the stall. Like it's you. It's like that's what. And when people walk in, they're like, oh my God. They're like, I got, like, I got goosebumps right now telling you just on my, on right. my own arms. But it's like, that's what we want everyone to feel is like, what did I feel the first time I walked into a Team Canada locker room and felt like it was my own personal self. Right. Outside of the sledge hockey experience, you do public speaking and speaking events. And I was wondering, what do you get out of that? What's, what's the, the thing that you love about that most? Helping people. Um, turn your mess into your message. 
And so for me, for those people that don't know, I broke my back 12 years ago dirt biking. Like the kicker is that not only did I break my back, but my dad was paralyzed five years or four years before I was from a deer hunting accident. So my mom had both husband and son in wheelchairs at the same time after my dad fell from the tree. A year later, my dad took his own life. And then the year after I felt like the same, then found Team Canada and the Paralympics were amazing. And post-Olympic depression came around and I felt suicidal again. And so long story short is like to share that story of like pulling myself out of the gutter several times to now building this to like creating a full-time job around Paralympic sport, being super pumped and stoked every day. Like I'm hiring my friends, I'm good. And like to get up on stage and share that story and let people know that like, you don't have to go to these extreme lengths of like a paralysis or a devastating life injury or to necessarily be on a podium, but to get from like a low point back to a healthy place in your life is entirely possible. And to have the opportunity to like share that with someone and inspire them to do the same, that's what gets me fired up. Well, Kevin, uh, I really appreciate you doing this. And I mean, that story is, is something else. Your story is, is really something else. So thanks a lot for doing this. And really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And uh, just uh, to say thank you as well, I want to share with you a copy of my book. Um, I wrote awesome. my autobiography after 2015. Um, it's still standing. It's, the subtitle particularly is like, when you have every reason to give up, keep going. Um, it's just, it's a really raw story, but um, for those of you who kind of wonder what that journey was like, this is it. And uh, thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. You got it. Thanks for watching another episode of The Mic. Make sure to like and subscribe below because we'll be bringing you a new episode every Friday. We also have some exciting news. We're giving away eight pairs of Movember Bab Socks. All you have to do is like this video, subscribe, and comment below your Twitter handles so we can contact you if you're the winner. We'll be giving them away when we reach 100 subscribers and 200 subscribers. If you want more on Kevin's business, I'll link everything below. And if you want to get a copy of his book, I'll link that below as well.